Using mobile internet to work remotely from the road or the water. It's a popular topic and we're gonna tackle it in today's video. Hi there, I'm Chris. And I'm Cherie, and we are the hosts of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We have been working and living on the road and the water since 2006, and we get asked all the time, well, how do you make that work? You know, how do you do your work online from wherever you happen to be? And getting a reliable mobile internet set up to work remotely is a popular topic in RVing and boating groups and our own internet groups as well that we host. And well, it is entirely possible. We've been doing it for years. Many people are doing it for years, but there are a lot of considerations to take in mind. So we have a ton of resources. In fact, answering that question is why we created the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So a bazillion resources to dive in deep, but we're going to give you an overview of some of the most important considerations to keep in mind as you think about will working on the road or working on the water work out for you. And spoiler alert, there is no simple one-size-fits-all solution. You're gonna have to think this through. So there is no one-size-fits-all solution. There's not even a most-size-fits solution. You're gonna have to think through a lot of the factors that apply to you to be able to make an informed decision about your mobile internet setup. And that's gonna be taking into account things like your travel style, and your needs to be online, what you need to accomplish. And we're gonna dive into those, but first, you're gonna see a lot of bloggers and YouTubers sharing their mobile internet setup. And these are great starting places to get an idea of what you can do, but we recommend not just copying someone else's setup. They may have options that are no longer available, they may have different needs than you, so there's a lot of things that you really need to take the time and consider your needs. One of the most important considerations you have to keep in mind when thinking about working on the road is just what is your travel style? Are you going to be set up in one place for an extended period of time, or are you going to be frequently hopping and changing your entire connectivity environment with every hop? Are you needing, or ideally the passenger, needing to stay connected and work while underway in motion? That's a different type of connectivity situation than what you might do if you are focusing on your setup in a physical spot. Now, what kind of places are you going to be going to? Are you going to be going into urban areas or suburban areas where there's a lot of connectivity, a lot of cellular, potentially Wi-Fi to be found? Are you going to be staying with friends and family where you might have access to their connections? Or are you going to be going out in the boonies and remote areas where there's not a lot of signal to tap into and you might have to use more extreme measures? There's All of these things are possible, but you have to just balance your gear versus your travel style to make sure you build an arsenal that works for you. All right, next is what are your mobile internet needs? What do you need to be able to do online to do your job remotely? Now, just because you're working remotely, there's a wide, range of things that you might need to do throughout the day to keep connected and they use different amounts of data and have different requirements. So the needs of someone who is maybe doing customer support is just answering emails, maybe a little bit of research on the web and a little bit of social media, it's going to be very different from someone who has to do things like maybe a live broadcast, managing a YouTube channel, or doing video conferencing where there's two-way interactive video that requires both good uploads and download speeds and uses a lot of data. Next, is your job flexible or is, do you have a very fixed schedule with deliverables and you have to be available from certain hours of the day? Those needs might redefine what you consider to be reliable mobile internet. If you have a flexible schedule where you can just check in and turn in work assignments when you have connectivity, that's going to give you a lot more agility and maybe need less redundancy than someone who has to show up every single morning at 9 a.m. and be on call and be available throughout the work week. Next, how much data do you need a month? Are you doing lots of video calls? Are you doing lots of things with high bandwidth needs and need hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of data a month, that's going to be a very different setup and looking at different data plans very differently than someone who just needs a few dozen gigabytes of data a month. So definitely these are things to keep in mind. Now, another very important consideration for working on the go is understanding what requirements might be there from your place of employment. Do they say that they need a wired connection? And well, what does that mean? Is it 
wired to cable and DSL, which is kind of hard to come by if you're on the road or on the water. Or maybe they don't mind if your wired connection comes from a wireless source. Um, understand what the real requirements are and what's nice to have, not nice to have. Another important requirement to understand is minimum download and upload speed requirements. And are they guidelines or are they set in stone? Because it's a lot harder on the, on the road to have guaranteed fast speeds, but you can often have plenty fast enough speeds to do almost all work. You just need to understand what are the requirements and what might get you in trouble. And then another very important one is to understand what security requirements might be imposed on you by your job. Do they require you to connect with a VPN? Most VPNs will work just fine over mobile, but some have issues. So talk with the IT department. You might need to do some experimentation and configuration issue, uh, changes to make everything work smoothly. Do they require you to have a static IP address? That is possible to arrange for mobile connections, but really ups the complexity of things. So again, understand what the requirements are from your employer and then work out the best ways that you can meet those requirements on the go. Redundancy. It's your friend on the road, especially if you need anything with the word reliable in the word mobile internet. And the reason for that is at each location you go to, there's going to be a best option. It's going to change each time you move. And the more options you have on board, the more chances you have of being able to get a usable signal and a usable connection to get done what you need to get done. So there is no single best mobile internet option. It's the one that works best at your current location. Redundancy. We're going to say that word a lot in this video. Redundancy is what you need. Now, redundancy could take the form of having multiple cellular carriers on board to use and multiple cellular data plans. It could be having lots of different signal enhancing options from simple antennas to antennas on your roof to cellular boosters. It could mean having options to tap into Wi-Fi networks, maybe provided by your marina or your campground. Maybe having the flexibility to go off and find a usable connection, maybe at a library or a cafe. These options are so important to have that redundant option so that you can keep connected and get done what you need to get done. Now, why is redundancy important? That's because mobile internet can be finicky. Things change, whether it's your location changing or the environment changing around you. Now, uh, Wi-Fi could be interfered with by your neighbor turning on the microwave. A drone can fly by overhead. The cell tower you're connected to could go down for maintenance. A large RV can pull in next to you. All of these things can severely impact your connectivity situation. And if it's critical for you to be online, you need to know what your plan B is, your plan C maybe, maybe even your plan D, and have them understood and in mind of what you're going to do if your primary connection has issues. So again, understand what can impact your signal and plan ahead to have your backup plans. Just like when you jump out of an airplane, you really want to have that reserve parachute, even if you don't necessarily think you're going to need it. Now, let's talk about assembling your mobile internet solution and the gear and data plans. And there are three primary ways that RVers and boaters get online. That's cellular, using Wi-Fi access points, and satellite. First, Wi-Fi at your marina or your campground is consider that a nice to have backup option, but it's probably not going to fit the word reliable in a lot of places. There just generally isn't enough backhaul, enough bandwidth to share with a whole bunch of people. But it might work in some cases, but don't depend on it. Don't plan your reliable mobile internet solution for working remotely around using Wi-Fi. Satellite, it's kind of difficult. There's a lot of considerations right now and the current options out there are kind of limited and there's upcoming options in the years ahead. We're kind of in a medium period for satellites, so it's probably not something unless you're really, really going out into the boonies that you want to consider as your primary mobile internet connection. Cellular is where a lot of us working remotely put all of our eggs into, and that's using the same technology that you use to make a phone call is taking that as a data to create your internet connection and the, you know, it's picking your cellular carriers, your cellular plans, and the gear that you're going to use. It can be fast, it can be reliable, and there is signal all across the country if you plan your travels accordingly. Now there's the consideration of 
what gear are you going to use to get online to get your work done? And there is no simple choice and there's a lot of options out there ranging from the simplicity of just using your smartphone to make a hotspot and get online with that connection, sharing that, to really advanced cellular routers. You know, you've got so many different options and just copying somebody else is not going to work out. Uh, some of the basics to consider is things like personal hotspots, also known as MiFi's or Jetpacks. These are cell phones without the phone part. They cre create a private network for you without having to involve your phone in the connection. Great way to get some uh, connection to share. Um, you might want a router that lets you take multiple connections potentially and share those out by tethering it to the router. Um, you might want to have gear that lets you tap into longer range Wi-Fi you know, from the roof of your RV using some long range Wi-Fi gear if Wi-Fi is important to you. To enhance your cellular, you might use a booster to bring in better cellular signal. And sometimes you might combine all the parts together in a cellular integrated router that actually has the cellular pieces inside the router that is controlling that connection. Or you might just use a tablet and get a lot of work done on a tablet which has built-in cellular too. There's so many different pieces of the puzzle and what is right for someone else is probably not going to be right for you because of what your work needs are, what the, your needs for redundancy are, what sort of plans you have available, and what gear fits into your personal um, um, mobile living situation. So, so many pieces to bring together. All right. Since cellular is likely going to be a core of your mobile internet setup, those cellular data plans are a key component to your overall solution and keeping you connected. That's why it's so important that you know how much data that you need a month and the way in which you need to get it. Now, the cellular data plans are changing all the time from the carriers and the terms and conditions and that mobile hotspot feature, using data to get laptops and computers and remote monitoring systems online that's a key component to understand in your cellular data plan. Now, if you know you're going to need a lot of data, like where you don't want to be monitoring it constantly, you're probably going to need to go shop unlimited data plans that are out there. And understanding how those vary is extremely important. We have a whole resource for that for you to go tap into. Just keep in mind that one of those options might be going through third-party resellers and they come with the caveat that those plans can go away at any time because it's out of the control of the third-party reseller as to whether or not they get to keep those plans that they use behind the scenes. If you need lots of data in a legit way, you want it direct with the carrier, well, you have limited options because the carriers may not offer plans that can meet that need. You also need to know what sorts of devices does a cellular plan work for them. Some are specifically for smartphones and only include a limited amount of mobile hotspot use that you can use to get your computers online with. Some are specifically for jetpacks and MiFi's and mobile hotspot devices. They may not allow you to use them in other devices. And then some may allow you to use them inside of a mobile router. You're going to have to research and keep that in mind when you're selecting the gear you want to use as well as the data plans that you're going to subscribe to. But now we're going to conclude with some important tips just to make your work life a little bit better on the road. And one of the most important ones is to do some planning in advance. So when you're heading off to a new campground or marina or a travel route, do some research about what the connectivity is going to be like, where you're headed before you get there so you know what to expect. There are apps, we actually wrote one called Coverage, that will help you see what the coverage maps might be, where you're headed to. You can check in with the carriers. You can check crowdsource uh, sources like um, Campendium, which is a great place that has campground reviews listing coverage information, or crowdsource coverage maps like OpenSignal. So do your homework in advance, know what to expect before you get there, and maybe adjust your travel plans accordingly. Next tip is if you have a big work deliverable or you know you have an upcoming webinar or you have a big work day, don't combine that day with a driving day. A lot can happen when you're on the road, breakdowns, weather. You may have difficulty getting a solid connection once you get into your new site. Give yourself some leeway so you're reducing the stress of not combining a big repositioning and setup day 
with also having to be online at a certain time or deliver a big file. You know, we've said this several times already, but it is so important, is to know what your backup options are and to test them in advance at each new location. So if something does go wrong with your primary connection, you know how to switch to your backup really quickly and still get through a work day. And if all else fails, if your plan A, B, C, and D are just not cutting it at your location, the next option is to go seek some open Wi-Fi, maybe at a cafe or a library or our favorite. Buy the brewery with outdoor place, great place to sit and get a beer and some signal. This was just an overview. There is a lot more to dive into to be set up for working on the road. And we offer a ton of resources on this. If you go to mobileinternetinfo.com slash working remotely, we have put together all of our guides related to assessing your needs, understanding the challenges of mobile internet, and diving into selecting your gear, your data plans, and a lot of use cases like video conferencing and security and privacy, and sorts of things that you might need to do in your workday. So please go check those out, continue your research, we also offer a free Facebook group, Internet for RVers and Cruisers, where you can come in and our staff will help answer some of your basic questions. Now, a lot of those resources are completely free, but for people like us who work on the road and who depend on a mobile connectivity, we have a premium membership, the Mobile Internet Aficionados, where we go a lot deeper into covering this stuff and sharing together as a community all the ways that we are able to work online. So please consider joining our Mobile Internet Aficionados or if you're not willing to join, thank a member for providing the resources to help all of this be possible. We could not do this without their support. We don't take sponsorships. We're not dependent on selling gear or plans. In fact, we don't sell plans or gear. We are member and community funded, and it was all designed around people who consider mobile internet an important part of their lifestyle. And working remotely, there's probably not a more important need than that for most of us on the road. So whether you use our free content or you want to go further and have access to our vendor discounts, our reviews, our Q&A forums where we are happy to dive in and help you understand and select the stuff, our classrooms and other benefits that we offer, we hope to see you down the road and may the bandwidth be with you. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.